So in my previous video, you guys would see me uh, trying color film and developing color film for the first time using Cine Steel's uh, C41 kit that was sent to me by silverprint.co.uk. So after making that video and developing the film, I came out with some results. Some of them were okay and some of them were not so okay. And like always, I read the comments and try and reply to as many as I can. Uh, after I've made a video and I've got some really good feedback from some of you guys uh, In fact from all of you guys um, in the comment section gave me some really good feedback and some good pointers So uh, I went off the next day and did round two started taking some more photographs on another roll of Cine, Cine Steel uh, 50 daylight film this time I changed a little bit of development of the process around a little bit and I got better results. I'll show you the images that I've uh, taken and scanned and uh, put out for you guys to see. And then I'll talk about some comments that I got and how I changed my process a little bit. So this time around I felt like I got much better results and I got a comment from a regular commenter and a great guy called Lensman57 and he said develop the film with a rolling motion for three and a half minutes at 38 Celsius in a water bath of 39 Celsius. And what I did on my first attempt is I had a bowl of water which I threw in the water and it was uh, got it to about 40 degrees and then what I do is put dip my tank inside the water leave it there for when I was ready to do my inversions but my inversions were like this you can see on the video here I'm showing you my inversions were like this so maybe the way I was inverting the tank um, made the color shift a little bit I had a couple of comments mentioning about the Jobo film processor and you know if your inversions aren't uh, spot on you're going to get some color shift so those comments in mind this time when I inverted the tank I left it inside the bucket like I showed you earlier on and instead of inverting like this um, I took Lensman's advice and I just did four inversions or ten at start like this and then every 30 seconds did another four inversions one two three four just gently and put it back in the water and then we go on to talk about water temperature I think the first time when I, I did this um, I measured the temperature inside the bowl that I was using to keep my tank warm and the chems warm uh, that was at 40 degrees but I think over that time it must have uh, dipped because this time round I kept checking the temperature of that water and uh, I kept topping it up with the hot water kettle bringing it back up to 40 all the time so I kept that constant at, at 40 as as, uh, as well as I could and I seem to get better results for it. And a few of you guys are also mentioning about a uh, heater. So I've got two comments there, one from Tamas and one from RT, uh, talking about the, uh, I'm probably gonna butcher this name, the Swarvide, Swarvide uh, heater. Um, and I think Cine still do one as well. And you know, you can get these heaters online, Cine still do one as well. Um, but I also wondered if a fish tank heater would do the same job. There's one here that I found for like nearly 20 quid. Uh, a fish tank heater. Do they do the same job? I don't know. Does anyone use a fish tank heater to keep their chemicals at the right temperature? <laughs> For 20 quid, it's worth a go, isn't it? So I feel like I got better results by just rotating the tank slowly and keeping that bowl of water up to the uh, temp constant temperature all the way through. The next up was washing a film and stabilizing. Now I've heard and read that these new emulsion films have already got some sort of stabilizer built in. So you know you don't have to have a stabilizer at the end of the wash but some people suggest that you do uh, there's a bit of a conflicting argument there between stabilizers and not you need to use a stabilizer i suppose maybe some films maybe some you don't i guess that's just a case of reading up the data and information on the film that you've got uh, for shooting color in this particular instance the cine still i've read that it has a stabilizer built in so you don't need stabilizer at the end so once a film is shot developed washed and fixed and dried it's then time for scanning i don't have a flatbed scanner to do this and most of you guys know i'm always in the dark room so i use my dslr to do scans mainly only to show you guys on the videos the prints that i'm doing and also a bit of a record for myself so uh, i went ahead and scanned these color uh, negatives and i got a comment 
which reads also the strange colors is probably due to how you did the inversion process meaning in photoshop inverting the image what did you use just hitting the invert won't get proper colors at all since there's a big room for interpretation and also got a few comments about white balance as well so i did a little couple of tests on the white balance before i took the photographs and scanned i did a white balance on the base of the film um, set that in uh, took a photograph and then i did one uh, uh, taking a white balance from the actual light panel that i've got did that and then i did one on auto white balance and i found the best results to be on auto white balance or just taking it from the film base there wasn't much difference in fact i couldn't see any difference between those two and the other thing that threw me was trying to read the negatives straight off all the different colors i just couldn't interpret them at all and if we look at this tractor for example the negative shows that uh, the tractor hub or the wheel is blue and i don't know what blue is on the on on a negative you know i've not shot color before so what i did i just took a color sample off of google uh, put it into photoshop and inverted it and that gave me a little bit more of an idea of what the color changes were doing once i inverted but as we can see the negative shows the tractor wheel to be blue so if we look at the chart underneath blue uh, okay we're, we're going to go towards yellow which i know that that tractor had a yellow wheel so that kind of gave me a bit bit of a better idea when i'm looking at these negs uh, with my eyes you know so I took the image into Photoshop. You can see I had to crop it and um, put it the right way up. And then the first thing I did was invert it just by using the um, sliders here. Now it's inverted and we've got this like bluey looking tint. So I pressed the auto button to see what Photoshop would do and it didn't really do much for me. So I went into the sliders on the color temperature and bought the uh, top one, the temperature right down to blue almost, and then started playing with the tint, which I brought down more to green. And it looks a bit strange going down to blues and greens, but don't forget this is inverted. So in fact, I'm going yellows and magentas. And then I started playing with those two a bit more and I started to get colors uh, coming in that was kind of familiar to me. And then once I started playing with the contrast sliders and all the others as well, I ended up getting this image here, which I quite liked. And that leads me on to some other comments that talk about Negative Lab Pro. So there's a few suggestions of people using Negative Lab Pro. I haven't used that. It's um, a program that, I don't know, 90 odd dollars or something. Whether I get that or not, I don't know if I'm going to continue with color in the future. So I'll play around with Photoshop for now. Robert DeVroom said the stress and work keeping temperature and time constant made me decide to never even try to develop color film again. I kind of get that, but... I'm not, I just don't like giving up on something, you know, if I've got something to do and uh, I want to try it out, if I don't get the results that I see the first time round, I'll try and try and try again until I can, you know, until at least I know that I've done my best um, to see if it suits me, if I enjoy it. Uh, I enjoyed the process of developing the film. In fact, yesterday I couldn't wait to get out and shoot some colour again and come back and start developing and seeing this time if those little changes worked. And they did. So, you know, I guess it's like anything. If you're not enjoying it and you can either throw it in the bin or, you know, you can carry on and, and, and try and smash it and uh, as, as well as you can. Snap Snappist, another regular uh, commenter on my channel. Um, he says about ECN2 developer, that film should be developed in ECN2. And in fact... On the actual film itself, it says process promptly in C41. So, you know, you only do what the film tells you to do. I'm not going to, well, I've, I've nearly run out of stuff now, so I'm not going to try it in ECN2. So I've got some other uh, films to try out in that, but interesting to know. Maggie Benston says uh, Photoshop's okay for doing this sort of work, but it's a bit of a pain in the butt because you've got to go through each photograph and process. I didn't do that. I just selected all the all of the RAWs and I, I changed what I needed to change on the first RAW and it copied and pasted it onto all the others. But yeah, granted, once I brought them into Photoshop, each one had to have a little tiny bit of tweaking here and there uh, because of the different scenes and different lights. So, you know, I kind of get that. Maybe Negative Lab Pro just automatically does it for you magically but i should imagine you still got to tweak a little bit surely another contributor is a better angle is also on the youtube members hello mate um he says also for courses i usually have a dev fest with c41 and e6 because the pet chems expire quickly um then you can shoot that amount of film yeah I, yeah i totally get that because i've got these chemicals all mixed up now i don't want them to go off i still reckon i can get another maybe 10 rolls of color film out of it so i'm going to be going on a color fest for the next week or so and try and get as much done as i can in those chems before before they go off in so yeah i totally get your point 
And then you've got Ian Mack, he's going on about magenta cast usually means that your chems are too hot, 38 uh, rather than 40 for the developer. We're going back to all the chemical temperatures again. And in the last video that I put out, I said that I'm not going to go in the dark room make prints because I haven't got a colour head in larger. I meant for the Durst. I do have an Intrepid in larger, but that is out on loan uh, with a mate. So I can't just ask him for that back talk because I can go and develop some colour film. He's enjoying using that for black and white printing. So I'm leaving that where it is. And in my last video, I mentioned that I only shot half of that cine still. I said I was going to cut it out of the camera and... Um, just develop what I'd shot. So uh, someone said to me, how do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Once I've taken my photographs, okay, there's no lens on this obviously, but once I've taken the photographs, I'll go into the dark room, completely pitch black, and I'll open up the back of the camera. I'll take the film out carefully. I'll take the film out of the camera, and I'll pinch it there, and I'll pull all the film out of the camera, keeping my finger and thumb there and I'll just pull a little bit of leader out, I cut it, put the film can in me, in me pocket, and then um, put the exposed film straight into the developing tank. That way, um, I'm only gonna develop what I've taken photographs of, and I've got another half a roll of film to play with. And finally, Joseph says, what a palaver. Yeah, <laughs> I, can't, I can't disagree with there, mate, it was a palaver. <laughs> Um, but like I said, it's something that I, I don't want it to beat me as such. Uh, it was only my first try at shooting and developing colour. Uh, the second time around, I found better results and I enjoyed it a little bit more and it was a little bit quicker for me as well. Whether I go on to getting the Jobo processor and a temperature um, control and all that stuff all in one, uh, I don't know. I'll get the rest of this developer done uh, with some more colour film and see how I like the process. Like I said in the last video, I might enjoy myself, you know, I might like it. Um, but black and white is definitely where my heart is. So don't worry, guys, this channel is not going to be changing to a colour uh, film channel. And finally, a massive thanks to the guys at Silverprint for sending me this stuff to try out. Otherwise, I would never have gone into colour or even tried it in the first place. So the massive thanks goes out to those, silverprint.co.uk. And also a massive shout out to you guys and the people that commented on that last video. It really did help me out and, uh, you know, trying to get to understand where I went wrong. Uh, hopefully, you know, onwards and upwards. But, um, you know, <laughs> this, 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 this channel is not going to turn into a colour film channel, so don't worry, I'll be out on black and white next. In fact, I'm going to go out in a minute and shoot some FP4. I'll catch you next time.